Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Today is uh, April the 4th, 2023. It is Tuesday, and April is just flying by. I am reading the and reflecting on the book titled 40 Days with the Holy Spirit, A Journey to Experience His Presence in a Fresh New Way. The author's name is R.T. Kendall, and you can order the book on Amazon.com. It is not a big book. It's a nice, small, medium-sized, small, medium-sized. Well, it's pretty much a medium-sized book, but it's 40 days of that. It's like a journal where you can read, and then you can study, and you can also journal if you choose to do that. So uh, I am just embarking on this 40-day journey with the Holy Spirit, just rededicating my life to Jesus and just wanting to just get all that I could get here, you know, and learn all that I can learn um, in having a personal, dynamic, one-on-one relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit who he left for us to lead us and teach us and guide us into all God's truth concerning our truth. And then we will learn to be disciples uh, of the kingdom of God. So I am on day six of this wonderful book on learning how to set time aside and spending quality time with the Holy Spirit. It has been so refreshing because I am recording this 40-day spiritual journey on my YouTube channel. And I can go back and get some more spiritual nuggets that I may have missed. Or I can gain more insight and revelation to what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach me on this 40-day journey. So um, with that said, uh, let's get into this chapter. Uh, The Holy Spirit has been amazing and I am learning something new and more and more about him each day and so today's chapter is chapter six and it is titled the holy spirit vindicates and so and this is a very needed chapter in our walk with the lord because we are going to learn what vindication means to the holy spirit and how he will clear us from false blame or accusations that the enemy has continuously tried to diminish us with. Yes, people have brought accusations to us and people have accused us of false things, but it's the enemy that is working in those people and they might not even know it, but they have to be set free of some things before they can come into full knowledge and understanding of who the Holy Spirit can be in their life. So if they're not on God's side or they're not working for Christ or God, then they are on the enemy's side and the enemy is having his way with th- with him with them and putting all kinds of mean, evil, malicious thoughts, you know, into their minds and then they act it out because they're not under the guidance and the fullness of of the Holy Ghost and how the Holy Holy Spirit can operate daily in their lives. So um, it is the enemy that brings those um, false accusations against our character and our lives. And so I love this chapter because the author, R.T. Kendall, starts the chapter with one of my favorite, favorite brothers in the Bible. And his name is Joseph. He's in the book of Genesis, the Old Testament. And R.T. Kendall says the story of Joseph, the story of Joseph is one of his favorite Old Testament stories, too. And so I identify with Joseph a lot because Joseph was a dreamer and I always had the ability to dream big. But I was always uh, I always saw myself as just a dreamer and not really a goal achiever. And so I'm working on that part of my story now, and God is delivering me from different bad habits, such as procrastination, doubting myself, and fear of using my voice for his purpose and kingdom. I am working on that right now. I am getting my life together. Hallelujah. Okay. And so Joseph's story begins in Genesis chapter 37, and his story goes all the way through Genesis chapter 50. If you take time aside and get into Genesis, that is the first book of the Bible, and read about Brother Joseph. 
He is amazing. His story is amazing. I love stories. I love to hear stories. I love to ask questions about people's stories. I want to one day be able to interview people so they can share their amazing stories and their triumph and their testimonies and their test. So um, I look forward to what the Holy Spirit is going to show me down the road as I continue to learn who the Holy Spirit is on this 40 day journey. So the story starts in Genesis 37, Joseph's story, and goes all the way through Genesis 50. And so this story is very dear to God and the Holy Spirit because the Lord does not operate in our lives as a fast genie in a bottle or a magical God. The Holy Spirit takes his time because the matters of the heart are very dear and important to him. And we learn how to display God's love and character once we get through our trials and tests we may face when God is building character and renewing our hearts and minds. And to summarize Joseph's story, I hope you will go to Genesis and read the story in your intimate time with the Lord. But Joseph uh, is the son of Jacob. Who, who Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. And Joseph had 11 brothers and he was favored by his father, Jacob. And he was given this birthright and is also told in the story that his father gave him a cloak or a coat of many colors. Joseph was like his favorite son. And so Joseph made a big mistake and told his brothers of a dream he had. And Joseph said, to his brothers, his 11 brothers, that his 11 brothers would one day bow down to him. And his dream made his brothers very mad and threw him into a pit or a well. He, they threw him into a deep, dark pit. And then they plotted to kill him. But one of his brothers, Reuben, decided to talk to the other brothers. He gathered them all together and said, hey, let's not kill our brother. That's our blood. Um, instead, let's all agree to sell Joseph to the Ish Ishmaelites, and that's the tribe of Ishmael, that is um, the son of um, Sarah's uh, concubine, or the woman who had a, a baby with Abraham. Um, I, for, I'm, I can't remember her name right now, but so the brothers all agreed when Reuben, the brother, the older, older brother said, hey, let's not kill him. Let's just sell him and so they went ahead and sold uh joseph to the ishmaelites and let's see and so um they were passing the ishmaelites were passing by and they sold joseph into slavery and so and they went back and they told their father jacob and they took the coat and they shredded it up like a wild animal came and they told their father that Joseph was killed by a wild animal which saddened Jacob's heart immensely he was so sad that he thought his son Joseph was killed by a wild animal and so even though Joseph's brothers plotted to get rid of him God was still with Joseph Joseph was sold to an Egyptian officer named Potiphar and he won favor with him. So he was favored by his um, his boss. Potiphar was like a boss to him or Joseph was his slave. And so Joseph was accused of raping the Egyptian's wife. The wife came to him and tried to seduce him and tried to make him do things to her that he was not, you know, um, in sync with. He did not want to, you know, do anything with the wife. But she came and accused Joseph of raping her because he did not want to lay with her. And so Joseph then was thrown into prison. And so he stayed there for a long time. Joseph was like, what is going on here? God was, you know, testing Joseph and putting him through some trials and tribulations. That's what God does for those he loves. He chastens us. He puts us through some stuff to grow our character, to mature us, to... Uh, make us realize that we need to count on the Holy Spirit at all times. And so God was still, God was still with Joseph in, in the prison system. And so Joseph had a gift of interpreting dreams and the Pharaoh released him out of prison. Uh, 
so Joseph could tell him what his dream was about. The Pharaoh had this dream and he could not interpret it and he didn't know. And so there was a man in prison with Joseph. Joseph had interpreted his dream. And so when the cup cup bearer, he was called the cup bearer, he was released. And when the Pharaoh was asking who can interpret this dream that I had, Joseph, he remembered Joseph was a dream interpreter. And so he told the Pharaoh, I know a man and he said he's in prison and he said well get him out if he can interpret this dream i need him here okay and so the pharaoh released joseph out of prison so joseph could tell him what his dream was all about and so the holy spirit is referenced in genesis 41 and verse 38 and it says where pharaoh said to his servants can we find a man like this a man equal to joseph in whom is the divine spirit of god and so we see that the Holy Spirit inspired Joseph not only to dream, but to also interpret other people's dreams as well. So Joseph was a dreamer, and then he was uh, he had the gift of interpretation as well. Um, and so in time, as Joseph stayed patient with God, he was made prime minister of Egypt. And sometime later, the famine that had went on, that's what he interpreted the Pharaoh's dream, that there would be a famine, a great famine. And he, uh, store, he told the Pharaoh to store up food so that the famine, when it hit, that they would be, you know, they would be okay. They would have food and they would not starve to death. Okay. And that's just to summarize those those chapters. And so um, in time, as Joseph stayed patient with God. Um, let me make sure I'm in the right place. It's, uh, in time, as Joseph stayed patient with God, he was made prime minister of Egypt. And sometime later, the famine brought all of Joseph's 11, 11 brothers back to Egypt to buy food. And his brothers had to come to him as the prime minister. And they literally had to bow down to the prime minister because that's where the food was stored and that's where they had to go and give food for their tables and so they didn't realize that they were bowing down to their brother joseph they thought joseph was dead somewhere or he was off somewhere into a far land somewhere after they sold him into slavery and so joseph dreamed came to pass in a perfect divine way and the holy spirit brought vindication to joseph since the brothers ended ended uh ended up needing him yeah the brothers ended up needing him and a lot of times your enemies will become your footstool god will make your enemies your footstool and that just means that um you will not have to worry about them anymore they will be lower than you because they're um you know they're in 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 manipulation and control you know they have that evil spirit on them and that they're not allowing god to use them and begin to pour his spirit out into their life the fruits of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness or long suffering jesus suffered long on the cross for us long-suffering or faithfulness and then self-control those are the fruits of the spirit it's good to get those into your mind into your heart eat them digest them it says against such there's no law god says you can never have enough love you can never have an overabundance of joy that you can never 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 get you know uh get greedy on peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness you can never you can never stop the gentle spirit or the ain't gentle angel and say hey stop i've had enough gentleness <laughs> you can have you again such there's no law meaning that god god did not put a law into effect for the fruits of the spirit um so let's see the definition of indicate to vindicate means to clear someone of blame or suspicion, show or prove to be right, reasonable or justify. God wants to justify us. He is a just God. If we feel like our, you know, character just got assassinated, somebody just done, just done lied on us, honey. Character assassination or putting false things out on us, just lying. A lying out of what? Jealousy or just because they don't 
get their full picture of the plan that God has for them. So they're going to come on over to your plan and they're going to try to mess it up because it's just like taking a test. The cheaters, you have your, you know what you're doing on your test. You're taking your test. Sometimes you'll probably cover your paper up because you just know you are just going to ace this test. And then you have people who did not study and they was out there partying too hard and didn't care. So the next day they're looking and they're trying to look over at your paper and all that. And they're trying to get your, you know, your answers because they did not take the time out to be excellent like you. Okay, so the definition, I read the definition of vindicate to vindicate. Okay, and so this chapter is what the Holy Spirit wants us to see, see in him as our vindicator. He wants us to see him as our vindicator. Uh, the one who goes and, and uh, makes us blameless or removes the, the suspicion off of our character, you know, to prove us right and reasonable and justified. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And he is our advocate. He goes to bat for us. He's our advocate. He steps in and he says, wait a minute, what what, what are we doing here? You're accusing my, my child of what? You know, that's a lie. The enemy, what? He's the father of lies. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. He comes to, he brings people and liars into your life just to lie, just to lie on you. That That's just beyond my thoughts. But anyway, so when people try to come at us with false lying, with a false lying tongue or try to insult our good character, God will be there for us and it will mail and it may not happen right away. But in time, God will vindicate us from all wrong and false accusations against our character. Okay, so R.T. Kendall goes on to say that when we are falsely accused or misunderstood, we have to remember two things. God only vindicates honesty and integrity, and those on the right side are on the side of truth and justice. He's not going to vindicate you if you done been out there willy-nilly, lying and cheating like the, the, the ungodly folks who don't know who they are so um and if you deserve vindication you will definitely get it from god that's you know god's going to vindicate you if he feels hey this you were falsely accused of this stuff i'm going to vindicate you just stand by and just 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 count on me okay and then the second god the second one is that god shows off when it comes to him vindicating his people he shows off he will show off and he will diminish your enemies okay so we should not get in god's way when he is an expert of indicating those who are falsely accused and standing with the lord okay our rt kindle says if we try and vindicate ourselves or try and seek vengeance we will delay the process that god has set in motion to clear us of blame or suspicion that comes from the devil if we try to get in God's way and we want vengeance and we want revenge and we putting sugar in people's tanks or we calling people and cussing them out and calling, you know, people on the phone that we have no business calling, you know, showing up, doing drive by, stalking people, you know, going in the uh, boss's office and cussing them out real good and then grabbing your purse and heading out, out the door. You no, know, God says, be patient, my child. I will vindicate you. Don't get in my way. Stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Okay? And so um, we should not get in God's way when he is the expert of vindicating those who are falsely accused and standing with the Lord. Okay? R.T. Kendall says if we try and vindicate ourselves or try and seek vengeance, we will delay the process that God has set in motion to clear us of blame or suspicion that comes from the devil. So R.T. Kendall also says that if we are not on the right side of truth and justice, then God will not come to our aid to help us or vindicate us because we are on the wrong side of his righteousness. We want to be on God's right side. We want to be in right standing with him. That's what righteousness means, just to be in right standing with God, not hiding under a rock somewhere like Adam and Eve or hiding behind something because we know we messed up and that we are on the wrong side of God's uh, good side. And we're on the side of unrighteousness, which is in not, not in right standing with God. So right standing means to be in right standing with God. Unrighteousness means to be in wrong standing with God. 
And so some scriptures that R.T. Kendall gave is Deuteronomy 32, chapter 32, verse 35. And it says, vengeance is mine and retribution in due time. Their foot will slip for the day of their disaster is at hand and their doom hurries to meet them. So that's God's talking. That's God's word. He's telling you, stand back. Don't try to get involved with this. I got this. I'm the best adventure here. I know what I'm doing and I know what time I'm doing it and how I'm doing it. And when I'm pulling this thing off, you gonna see me, you gonna see me in this, you know? And so that's God's word. Vengeance is mine and retribution in due time. Their foot will slip. Your enemy's foot will slip. No matter what they're doing, how they're doing it, when they're doing it, they're going to come to an end. Their, their, their destiny is not governed by God. It is not planned out by God. Or it, it, it could be if they, they, we have choice, we have the gift of choice. So we can either choose this way or we could choose that way. We could choose the blue pill or we could choose the red pill. You know, we have the gift of choice. God gave us that gift of choice. It's a gift, but some people misuse their gift or abuse their gift and they decide to make unwise choices and unwise decisions for their life. Without God, you know, making decisions without God is, is going to hurt you in the end. So in Romans uh, chapter 12 and 19 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteousness. For it is written in scripture, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. You know, we don't wish no bad on nobody, but if you are on the wrong side of God, then you are not on the right side of God. And so that's your choice. You could be either on this side with the sheep or you could be on that side with the goats. Which one? You want goat? You want goat? Curry goat? Or do you want sheep's skin, sheep's wool? <laughs> anyway. Okay. All right. So the chapter says, even though the Lord may not avenge you today or tomorrow, the Holy Spirit will still show up for you at his best timing possible for the situation you may be facing. Joseph had to wait for 22 years to see his dreams vindicated. R.T. Kendall says that Joseph may have had a long delay so he could get right within himself and learn the hard, long lesson of forgiveness. Okay, and that is what I am currently working on. Going, I'm going through that right now, learning how to forgive people who I feel hurt me and created soul wounds that, um, have been, that I've been nursing and keeping alive through unforgiveness. Um, and so I have now come to that point where I said, you know, I have to, I have to get these um, enemies or frenemies or whoever out of my, out of my bitter heart, out of the hardening part of my heart. I want God to break up that fallow ground, to break up all the, the hardness that I've allowed um, these uh, people uh, or associates to get the best of me, you know, or hurt hurt my feelings or, you know, speak false things into my life. <laughs> That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to just, he wants to zip your mouth. You know, he wants to mute you, zip you up. If he could sew your lips together, he would sew them really with the thickest needle that he could find and the thickest um, thread, <laughs> the, the weave thread. No, but anyway, um, so, yeah, that's what I'm working on. My soul wounds uh, through deliverance sessions. They're not spooky. They're not, you know, weird. All it is is just us um, deliverance coaches or deliverance deliverance team, people who are in, in the ministry of deliverance. They talk with you, walk you through your soul wounds, each soul wound that you might be battling, you know, that keeps just coming up in your spirit and in your heart. You just can't let it go because this person did this and she said this and she did that and he did this and he did that and he hurt me and he didn't love me like I wanted him to love me. He didn't know who he was to love you like you wanted him to love you. So, you know, we chose, uh, made unwise decisions for ourselves, And so I have to let all that stuff, that past go. Okay, so a uh, list of soul wounds for me, it can be emotional injuries, victimization in some type of way. Um if somebody touched you physically or if somebody 
you know, hurt you emotionally speaking, um, generational curses and my bloodlines, our bloodlines, we need to clear our bloodlines from a lot of generational stuff, curses. Your grandmother may have been this way and her great grandmother passed it to her and then great, great, great grandma. She didn't have a life. She didn't know who she was in the spirit. So it just gets passed down to each generation. Therefore, we are now enlightened and we are curse breakers and we caught on and that we have these opportunities to gain more knowledge of who we are in our bloodlines and why things happen the way they happen for us and why was I treated this way and why did I feel like the black sheep of the family now God has exposed you and he has opened your spiritual eyes he has opened your spiritual ears and now you can see and hear what the spirit is saying to you to get out of that um mindset that was passed to you and there's a new mindset god wants to renew our minds daily through the word of god through people ministering to us or us even ministering to ourselves you know sometimes like the song says you have to encourage yourself you know if nobody's there to encourage you encourage yourself and sometimes we have to get up off of our pity pot and out of that pit that we put ourselves in because of wrong choices unwise choices then we have to pick ourselves up and we have to dust our knees off our bleeding knees and we have to get uh, up and get right with god and god will begin to work on us and then he wants to use you he doesn't only want to help you and strengthen you and heal you he wants to use you he wants to say okay now you're okay to go on on and help the, the other hurting people out there and there's a lot of emotional turmoil going on a lot of emotional hurt going on that god needs to deliver his people from and, and uh help and bring up out of uh the muck and the mire of their life out of what we created for ourselves god wants to bless us and strengthen us and you know and use us pretty much that's it um so okay i uh, i said some of the things um that i'm dealing with unforgiveness, bitterness, distrust, pride, hatred. Um, you know, you could say, oh, I hate him. And, oh, you know, he did this to me. And, oh, you know, it's mainly past people that I dealt with, at, you know, in my dating life. You know, oh, I hate him. You know, you don't, you know, I don't really, really hate them. But if if, if there's any any type of bitterness and, and, and hate because that person didn't love me like, I wanted him to love me, you know, because he didn't know who he was. So why am I holding on to these bitter um, feelings, you know? And so um, hate, um, unrealistic expectations of others, whether it was friends, family, uh, loved ones, past lovers or whatever, who came into my life or into our lives, unfulfilling past relationships that did not work out, which I always say, man's rejection is god's protection if you feel rejected or abandoned or something just did not work out honey that was god's protection over your life you dodged a bullet you missed a bunch of mess and drama and emotional pits and all kinds of stuff if things didn't work out and that person ain't calling you or you 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 hear crickets on your line all day that's because God has you where he needs you. He has you exactly where he needs you. And he has your undivided attention. And yes, you're going to be in Cricketville for a while. You're going to hear them crickets, but put on some praise and worship music and drown them crickets out and begin to lift your hands up and to give God the praise for putting you exactly where he needs you to be. You're not somewhere over in a land that you don't know about man deceiving you a man hurting you manipulating you trying to control you trying to tell you what you're not trying to you know um diminish your light pretty much trying being used by the enemy to pretty much take you out of here you know to kill you so um if he could get you spiritually the next is the body so you know that's what the enemy works on he works on our spirit to try to kill our spirit first and then we go ahead and give up you know the ghost and say i'm out of here you know take me lord or whatever <laughs> okay so this chapter ends with um let's see okay so yeah man's rejection is god's protection so we should be glad that those old 
Rejection wounds are now being healed and resolved because we now understand why God did not bless the mess we were trying to create for our lives without seeking the Holy Spirit first and his wisdom that would keep us out of briar patches and pits and keeping us pit, um, keeping us from being pitiful in life. I don't want to be pitiful. I don't want to be um, disappointed. I want to be appointed. And when you find that you're being disappointed more than you are finding God's appointments or being appointed to the you know to the masses or to your communities, then um, disappointment has set in. That's when you have to turn that around and say, oh no, I'm going to close all these illegal entry access doors the enemy has to me, close them up, whatever they are, whatever illegal access he has, whether it's watching the wrong things on TV, whether it's having those things around your house, getting rid of a lot of the um, spiritual woo-woo stuff, um, things like uh, crystals and candles and, um, you know, different things that we want to believe in because they're beautiful. You know, I said, well, that's beautiful. That could, that's harmless. But when you have that portal open, the enemy's going to come in. He's going to do some damage to your soul in some form or fashion. You don't even know what's coming. And then once you open your eyes and realize that the devil was in all of that, that you just got out of because the Holy Spirit had you and was guiding you and got you out of it, even though our feelings were involved, then that's when you know, okay, this is real. This stuff is real. Let me get all this stuff together, gather it up, throw it in the trash. You don't need nothing around your house that's beautiful, that has portals open for the enemy to come and attack your life and hurt you and harm you and take your future and your hope and your, your dreams away from you because we want to count on beautiful things around us. No, God will give us his beauty for our ashes. He will put beautiful things uh, around our homes and they will be Holy Spirit filled. They will be from the throne room. They will be from heaven. We will be able to see Jesus, you know, um, set things up for us. He says, um, trust in me, lean on me. And he says, I will guide you into all your truth. Okay, so um, let me see. Okay, so so we should be glad that those are rejects, old rejects and wounds are now being healed and resolved because we now understand why God did not bless the mess we were trying to create for our lives without seeking the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and so this chapter ends with R.T. Kendall asking his readers if we are waiting for vindication. And because he knows, and I know, what it is like to be falsely accused, set aside, misunderstood, and, and uh, dealing with character assassination. We, we have had these type of tests from some of our own family members. Okay, R.T. Kendall tells us that these type of false accusations should not be taken personal because if we are standing for the truth and being falsely accused, God will definitely get involved. I may not, it may not happen right away, but Exodus 14, verse 13 says, Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Take your stand. Be firm and confident and undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For those Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will never see again. That's when he opened up the Red Sea and swallowed up all those soldiers who, was try to come, who try to come for the children of Israel, the Israelites. And they all drowned. And so, you know, we don't want nobody to drown. <laughs> we are not praying any wicked prayers against folks. We are not telling the Lord to go and kill that person and kill that one over there. We're just saying, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Just be patient, be humble. Put your two hands together and pray for those folks to uh, understand who they really are in the spirit. And understand that God has a plan and a purpose for their life and stop being used by the enemy because the enemy has tricked them into thinking that it's their own mind thinking that way. No, those are demonic forces working and operating in your mind to dog someone out, to treat somebody like dirt and trash and not care about that person's welfare or not even care about that person's soul. So that tells me something about you. You don't even care about your own soul. So how could you care about my soul if you don't even care about your own soul? 
you know, that's very sad that you would let your mind, your will, and your emotions just go to waste in this lifetime when God has given you a choice to choose wisely, to choose wisdom, to choose godly wisdom, to get that favor stirred up in your life, to see the blessings and the favor of God work in your life. So, you know, if you're on the wrong side of, of his, his righteousness, then, you know, we just pray for those people who do not take Jesus serious. Okay. And so God will definitely get involved. It may not happen right away. I read Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. Okay. And also R.T. Kendall says we need to get our hearts right and get our character right while God is in the throne room preparing our banquet table before us in the presence of our enemies. So while we are not just sitting by waiting idled because we want God to get that person and get him and get her and get her, you know, we have to get our character right. We have to get our heart right. And so that's what God is telling you. You know, um, vengeance might not happen right away or vindication might not happen right away. So in the meantime, we need to be working on our soul. We need to be working on our heart. We need to be getting that word down in our hearts and knowing that God works in his timing and that we should not be sitting by idled, watching television, praying to God that we want revenge on this person or you know vindicate, we wanna be vindicated. So um, R.T. Kendall is saying that we need to get our hearts right and get our characters right while God is in the throne room preparing our banquet table before us in the presence of our enemies. That's Psalms 23 verse 5. And so it is going to be one delicious, enjoyable meal when we see our enemies defeated and discarded by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You know, we're not going to be jumping up and down and joyous that someone, you know, that the vindication or vengeance, you know, hurt anybody we don't want anyone hurt we want to see people you know repent and come to christ that's what my whole um wish is for anybody who i feel who has probably hurt me or you know hurt my little feelings <laughs> wah, wah, wah. but anyway hey i am i have forgiving you know anybody who may have came into my life the, you know without the, the the full knowledge of god and the full trusting um, trusting God as your father, you know. Um, so do we need to go into the presence of the Lord and ask him to teach us how to forgive those who may have brought injury and soul wounds to fester in our hearts and minds? Uh, yes, we do need to go into God's presence and in his throne room and ask God to forgive those who may have hurt us and brought injury to us and brought soul wounds to us and then to forgive us so that our hearts will not stay hardened or he will begin to break up that foul ground within our hearts and make it soft, make it like flesh, make it tender, make it loving to expand our territory and start thinking of other nations, have a heart for the nations, have a heart for the churches, have a heart for the hurting, have a heart for men, you know, hurting men, have a heart for hurting women, have a heart for the children. You know, God wants to expand our territories. He doesn't want us to just sit up on our ant hill. I call it the bug's life, the movie, the bug's life. Everything was happening on a hill. And so God wants us to get off of our ant hills of life. He wants to expand us. He wants to make our territory is so much bigger, the prayer of Jabez, to expand my territory, Lord. Let me get out of my stinking thinking. Let me get out of my little feudal mind for a minute and show me some great things. Show me some big, bigger, bigger territories that you need me to go and help you conquer or take from the hands of the enemy, to snatch from the hands of the enemy. Nations, nations, nations. You know, call me to the nations, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord. But I want you to be right with me if I go to any nations. I want you to be right there with me. I do not want to do anything without Christ being involved. Thank you, Jesus. And so, um, yes, uh, we do. We uh, says, yeah, our minds are always thinking of ways we can repay our enemies and those who hurt us. But we have to remember God is the best avenger when it comes to getting our haters and our enemies back. We have to give those thoughts to God and take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Bring every thought into captivity. Bring it down under, to, under unto the obedience of Christ. Make that thought, that stinking thinking, make it obey Christ. Say, I, 
I, I, I deny this thought. I bring it. I, I can't. I, I arrest it, and immediately make it obey Christ. Christ, Christ is a rule. Christ is above all all of our thoughts. You know, um, the kingdom of God is above all of our thoughts. So, uh, if there's negative thoughts, if they're they're tormenting thoughts, bring it into the obedience of Christ. Arrest it and make it obey Christ. Say no thought you won't have to obey you don't have to obey God because this is his story this is my love story and his story that he's creating for my life and this chapter you don't win this chapter you got to get out of it because it's going to be a beautiful chapter between me and my savior amen thank you for my love story Jesus and you are blowing my mind as I speak so anyway in ending this chapter let us always remember to let the Holy Spirit be our name clearer Clear my name, Father God. Vindicate me. Sign the document that says she is vindicated. She is clear. Her name is clear. Antoinette did not do anything wrong. And this is my girl. Come on, girl. Let's go. We got to go. But anyway, he does He does it best. God does it best when he clears our name, when he's our vindicator. And he will do it in a manner that is amazing and in ways we could never imagine or dream of. We will truly know it is the Holy Spirit working on our behalf when we see how God shows up and vindicates us. And remember to never rush the Holy Spirit because he will do his work in his timing. And you will be so glad you did not interfere with his magnificent works, okay? So yeah, I went a little bit over my time. Uh, some chapters are longer than others. Let's see more scriptures to read regarding the Holy Spirit vindicates are Genesis chapter 41 verse 16, Matthew chapter 23 verse 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 through 5, and then 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 6 through 10. So that's your study time if you want to take note and take those scriptures down. Spend time with the Holy Spirit, get to know him, let him get to know you, let him love on you, let him show you and teach you some wonderful things uh, that he's doing in, in this day and time. It is a great move of God happening. He's waking people up. He's taking people out of their hurt and despair, and he's growing us up. He's planting us in good soil, and he's making those fruit trees. He's bringing forth fruit. It says, you will know them by their fruits. Are you a good fruit tree? Are you a budding fruit tree? Are you going to bear fruit for God? If not, you're going to be an old tree that's not bearing fruit. And he's going to cast you out and cast you down. I don't want to go down. I want to go up. I want to rise up. And I want to give God the glory and the praise for my life. So with that, I'm going to close with a prayer. Father God, we thank you for this chapter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit vindicates. We thank you for being our vindicator, Father God. We thank you for going before us, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that we have enough patience and virtue to stand back and watch you work and move and operate in our lives, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that the enemy did not win, Father God, in uh, some of these chapters that you are writing for our life. You said you are the ever-ready pen, ready to write some magnificent, wonderful, um, mind-blowing chapters of our love story. And our love story is a love story between you and I between you and your people, Father God. And you want to continue, Father God, teaching us all things, revealing all things to us, um, illuminating our pathway, Father God, giving us, you know, these, these, these nuggets, Lord Jesus, of opulence, Father God, for giving us the keys to the kingdom, for closing up all illegal entry accesses to our soul that the enemy has tried to get in. He will try to slip through a crack if we let any type of door, window, anything open to us, Father God, that he can get in and begin to um, manipulate, you know, and begin to lie. He is the father of lies. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. So we bind Satan right now. We bind his cohorts, his demonic forces, the enemies, the people that he's choosing to use to step into our life, Lord Jesus. Give us that discernment. Give us that full 
full recognition, take the blinders of our eyes and our ears and let us boom immediately know if that's an agent from the devil or if that is uh, a person that loves Jesus Christ and that they are on uh, the pathways to understanding who they are and they are in a deliverance um deliverance mode you know asking god to you know help me lord you know deliver me deliver me from all of this stuff that i may have picked up along my way so i thank you father god i thank you for this time i thank you for obedience Lord jesus i thank you for nurturing me father god i thank you for loving me more than anything just loving me and just you know um being concerned you know have having a concern about me father god when i want to go down this road and it's not the right road and you have a a, a um a detour block up and i i i, I gotta turn around i don't really want to turn around but i gotta turn around and then you say turn around you know stop being dumb <laughs> And you say, Lord, you say, girl, what am I going to do with you? But, you know, I just ask that everyone will find everything, everything, everything that is afforded to them through the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, come alongside us. Walk with us. Talk with us. Guide us. Teach us. Be alive in us, Lord Jesus. Teach us how to worship you daily. Teach us how to praise you daily. Teach us how to sit with you daily and study your word making your word true, dissecting every word, Father God, to work out our own salvation. You said every man must work out their own salvation. Teach me how to work out my salvation. And so I thank you, Father, for this time. I honor you. Um, I can't wait for the next chapter. Chapter uh, day seven is the Holy Spirit gives talent. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this. The Holy Spirit gives talent. And yes, you do. You've given us gifts and talents, witty inventions, ideas, you know, things that we can begin to use for purpose, for business, for business matters, Father God. Teach us to pay our tithes, 10% to the kingdom. That's 10 cents off of every dollar. Your time, your tenth, your talent, giving up your time, helping someone out, extending yourself to someone who may need you. And your talent, Lord, what is our talents? What is our giftings? What do we have inside of us that no one else have that you put our that your anointing in us that uh, only we can do? We it's 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 something you gave us an an an, an innate talent or anointing that only we can um, give, Lord Jesus, to the kingdom. So I thank you, Father, again. I, I, I just can't thank you enough. I thank you over and over and over and over for coming to get me. You came and got me. And I was going somewhere where I had no business going. And I just thank you for coming to get me. That's all I can say. I love you. I love you. Teach me how to love you with my whole heart, wholeheartedly, not with three-fourths of my heart or you know, five tenths of my heart, you know, help me to love you wholeheartedly. We are living in some times, we are living in some days, Lord Jesus, where we need you most. We need you at all times. Help me to be in prayer in my mind at all times, just praying in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, in my, in my uh, heavenly tongue, in my t in heavenly language. I thank you, Father. So with that said, in Jesus' name, I pray. We bind back class and retaliation. The enemy does not have a footstool in our lives. He has no, no matters. He has no business in our love story. And so I thank you, Father. I thank you for the love. Love. You said love will cover a multitude of sin. Father God, teach me how to love, Lord Jesus. Teach me what 1 Corinthians 13 love is all about. Not my watered down love that I've learned your first corinthians 13 love that deep deep love that you died for us to set the captive free in each and every one of our hearts i pray these things in your name and jesus is the way the truth and the light let the holy spirit reign get to know the holy spirit the holy spirit is real the holy spirit will will, will give you some downloads the Holy Spirit will, will, will rescue you out of some stuff that you got yourself into. 
you know, it's just that 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 stillness, you know, that that calmness. That's how he leads you and guides you into his truth or how he comes and he grabs your hand in the spirit and says, no, that is not my plan that I have for you. That is the plan of Satan. Satan wants to sift you like wheat. Satan wants to get rid of you pretty much. So you got to stop going on detours and on these self-centered routes. And you got to come back into my graces. You got to come back into the house of the Lord. You have to come back and put your ear to my mouth. I have things for you. I have things for you. I have things for you. I want to teach you. I want to show you. I want to guide you. I want to love on you. Stop. Just cut it out, chicky. Anyway, thank you, Father. I love you. Yes, Lord. I will stop. I will stop going my own routes. And um, I will continue to keep my ear to your mouth and listen be a good listener my mother used to say that to me miha be a good listener so i thank you for my listening ears i thank you for my eyes that you done took the scales off my eyes lord i was blind but now i see Woo! we bind counterfeits clowns and wolves and sheep's clothing off of our lives off of our love stories in the name of jesus i thank you I honor you. I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed and not stressed.